Hey everybody, it's Leslie um, back again to bring us another new guest that has something of interest to talk about that um, is something I really haven't given a lot of thought to in this industry, um, but I'm starting to see more and more conversations around it. Um, so I have Suzanne Post with me today and Suzanne um, lives in Tennessee and we met um, talking about new guidelines for Tennessee, but ended up evolving the conversation into um, something that I think is really useful for this industry. So Suzanne, I want you to tell them about um, the program that you're really advocating for and how that came about for you. Okay, sure. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I have been a licensed cosmetologist in Tennessee and a stylist behind the chair for 27 years. And I've also been a salon owner for 17 years here in Nashville. And I am also a survivor of domestic abuse. And a few years ago, I heard about some states that had successfully passed legislation that required stylists to be educated about the signs of domestic violence and how to respond. And so I really felt compelled to uh, connect with someone that could start a similar program here in Tennessee okay. and I have been super excited to work with this initiative with the YWCA here locally. Perfect. So I had heard of some programs over the past few years as well and, and uh, various states um, that um, were being enacted really a requirement um, for people when they were renew renewing their cosmetology licenses. Is it exclusive to cosmetology or are you also targeting barbers by chance? We are targeting barbers eventually. We okay. have been, um, we have been able to go into salons, into aesthetic studios, uh, nail salons. Mm -hmm. We are very excited to just pass it where it's required by all of the above. Okay, perfect. And the education, one of the things when I first heard it that I wasn't sure about, and so I'm just going to be honest, was I felt like it maybe made somebody feel responsible for somebody else, um, and that maybe that might be uncomfortable for them, um, or that somebody who was getting the training who was in that type of a relationship might feel uncomfortable. How do you feel about those two sort of questions or concerns people might have? Those are really good questions. Um, so first of all, we, we definitely emphasize that this training is to equip people with tools okay. about how to effectively listen to um, their client in their chair and how they can be a support, okay. but in no way would they be mandated to uh, report anything unless they saw a, um, actually saw an incident. You know, there are, I think, cases that you are required to to report something that they would be more than anything, just a, a solid support for their clients. Just giving them a knowledge base, so you, what, exactly. what things they might hear, what things they might see. Absolutely. And just kind of basic DV 101. And then the second part of it is that um, we know enough about the statistics that anytime you have a group of people together, one in four women will experience domestic abuse, domestic violence at some point in their lives. So we know statistically that there will be people receiving the information that may be a little bit uncomfortable by it. Mm -hmm. um, that said, I think that the, the pro of really educating people about what that looks like is so important because it could actually help someone that's in the training get to safety. Exactly. So in Tennessee, you guys have done it um, in a way that I haven't seen all across the country. You are actually going out into places of business and actually in person offering this education. Is that correct? That is correct. So we, how, like, I mean, how many, that's a lot of hours. <laughs> I mean, Tennessee is a big a state. It yeah. is. It's been um, specifically based here in Nashville thus far. So okay. we have been really uh, concentrating on this area. Our goal is to expand statewide and even across our country. Um, we know that we can't physically be there as, as much now, especially as we're in the middle of this COVID time. You know, we absolutely have to be able to embrace the virtual tools that we have. 
and it will allow us to to reach just so many more people if right. we can get an online training. Right. So we've been talking about potentially doing housing that training potentially on our website so that um, people all across the country, whether it was required or not, would have um, free access um, to that training. I do think it's important, in my opinion, that it be free, um, that a lot of people, um, particularly in this industry, are hard hit financially, um, not having worked for some long period of time, um, so that this valuable education would come to them free of charge. Um, how, who who are you working with to write that content? Is it are you writing it? Are there other people involved? Um, so I have paired up here locally with the YWCA okay. in Middle Tennessee, and they have been just the most incredible partners. They have all of the uh, DV education mm -hmm. that they provide to really any business, any organization that wants to provide that education for their staff or their um, students. They have the basic education and then we have been able to kind of customize it for the beauty industry. And so we have been able to kind of tweak the content to make it more specific to what signs we might see behind the chair and how that specifically relates to our industry. Right. So I, I do understand that domestic violence can be any kind of violence in, really in your home. I mean, it can be, obviously, we always think of men, uh, you know, versus women, so to speak, but it can be, um, it could be the other way around. It can be you know, women on women, whatever that, you know, it, that violence can be of any um, nature. But is the program that you would launch potentially for barbers a different program? Because um, are they, are, are we going with the statistics and assuming that they may actually identify someone who has a problem with violence control or anger control? Is that, would it be a different program or the same? Well, we do know that also statistically, one in seven men will experience domestic violence at some point in their life. Oh, wow, that's a high number. Which is a really high number. Yeah. We know that it occurs at the same rate in same-sex relationships. We know that um, it could be two women, two men. Um, and so I ultimately would love to see it expanded to recognize the signs from the, the flip side. Yeah. Um, to be able to recognize the abuser as well as the signs of someone who is abused and be able to really get them um, to spread that sort of support industry-wide. But as it is now, we specifically are more looking for the signs of someone who might be the, the recipient yeah. of that right. relationship. So do you have any success stories? Have you had um, stylists come back and say that they have utilized this or um have, what is the, what's the response you've gotten from people who have had the education absolutely um it's it's really been an overwhelmingly positive response it has um i've definitely had stories of people that have called me after receiving the training saying either uh in hindsight i've i've had people that have been in my chair that i can now with this with these tools recognize that they were in a in a situation whether it was um, financial abuse or verbal or emotional or certainly physical mm -hmm. um, they they know that because of the isolation component in so many abusive relationships that they might have been kind of that support uh, just the friendly support that might have been needed. I've also had people that have reached out and said it was so life-giving because it actually gave me a name for, for the type of relationship I have been in in the past right? or even currently was in because they were able to see like that was a not just a bad relationship but that was a relationship that might not have the potential to improve with with time. I think that's an interesting point. Um, you know, when you say one in four, I think all of us think for a second, wow, do I know? I mean, at my age, I, I know lots of people. I should, you know, I'm sure that I know somebody that fits in that one in four. And I think that one of the things that is unique about the beauty industry 
is that you get the opportunity to see somebody over and over and over and over again, every four weeks, every six weeks, whenever they get their hair done, right? Or their nails, or they come for their facials. And I think that um, like all relationships that end up this way, there is a sort of path they all kind of follow where you speak about isolating them and, you know, making, making their world much, much smaller so that you have control, that kind of thing. So I think that this education is helpful also because you, as the person who sees them every four or six weeks or however frequently you see them, you might start to be able to have that feeling that, oh, this is going down that path if you know what that path looks like, right? Part of it is knowing what does it look like before it even starts and so that um, you can maybe help someone seek some some guidance or some help. So I do think I mean, most of them follow a similar path, right? Most of these relationships follow a very similar path. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it is a pattern of control. And so there is, once you know the signs, there is a pattern that is kind of evident once you know about it. Yeah. And we do have just such a um, close relationship with our clients in a different way than most industries. And people tell us everything. And we, even if it's just that intuitive uh, kind of hit that you might get, just knowing your clients so well, you know when something feels right and when something doesn't feel right. And so it's, it's a really um, unique place to be in. And something we do in the training is we help to even give the tools to the service provider that they don't have to necessarily say a thing at that moment, that they could even call a hotline themselves and receive information about how to respond in the situation. They don't have to be a counselor per se. Right. You know, there are tools out there to support the service provider as well. And I think it's great because what I hear from you, like when you acknowledge out in public, I mean, we have a a million email addresses that will get the, you know, the notification that this video is up. When you can say in public, I am a survivor of domestic violence, I think that's so empowering. I think that, you know, when people can say, this is the path I've walked, but I have survived and I, and, but I get it. I, I mean, I 100% understand where you've been. I think that developing these kinds of groups, women seem to be really good at doing it. Men are struggling a little bit with that sort of pulling <laughs> together because, it is hard to acknowledge that you've been in um, just such a, a difficult situation that a lot of people don't really understand or people are afraid to get too close to. Um, I think of the people that if I look back that I think maybe were um, in, in a relationship that was a, in that, re that regard, um, how uncomfortable it made me to get too close because I, I, I don't know what to do. and their uncomfortability with, with their situation made me uncomfortable. So I think it's really great um, that there are actual people like you that are willing to step up and say, this is where I've been. You know, I'm not there anymore. And this is the path I took to, you know, remove myself from that situation. So we've all seen all the movies in Hollywood about it and all those kinds of things, but your real life story of success in this. So, you know, my, my hat's off to you for, for being brave and, um, you know, helping other people, whether it's men or women um, in this situation. So um, anything else you want to share with us about your program or where you see it going? Um, any, anything else you want to say? Um, I think just knowing that the more survivors are willing to speak, like to your point, the more we're able to remove the stigma around this topic, the more empowered all of us become. And it's, it's wonderful to be able to give back and support other people that might be in the same position. And even just um, to support the industry, knowing that it's a huge issue, knowing that just in Tennessee, we are fifth in the nation at the rate that women are killed by men. Wow. And knowing that that's a huge, huge problem and we can do something about it. You know, we can actually be empowered to make yeah. a difference and save lives. I, I mean, I look at you guys and I think of the Me Too movement. I think of all the women who never said anything, you know, they just, 
you know, kept it quiet, kept it to themselves, whether it was to stay in their jobs, to get a better job. Um, a lot of that had revolved around employer relationships or potential employer relationships, but just men that made them uncomfortable. And I think the power of the Me Too movement that what we taught our daughters was, you don't have to put up with that. You know, millions of famous people came out and said, you don't have to put up with that situation. And there is support around you. So that's where I, where I really see this going. And um, women just, for the most part, women, I realized that men, when you said one in seven, I was like, that's shocking number for men. Um, but nobody has to live in this situation, you know, um, that as adults, we shouldn't behave that way with each other and there is help out there. So I appreciate you. Um, we will be posting this up on our website and on all of our social media. And hopefully we'll be making an announcement in the next few weeks about um, hosting some education about how to identify potential signs, what are some of the resources out there, and also what to do if it's you. You know, if, that, if you're the one sitting at home doing the education and it starts to look familiar, what, what do you do for yourself, you know, kind of a thing. So I look forward to that. Thank you, Suzanne. And we'll see you, um, I'm sure when we launch it, we'll probably have you back on again. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Suzanne. Stay safe. Thank you. Uh -huh.